Okay, so um, last but most certainly not least, we've got um, Sarah from, from Prowler joining us. Um, Sarah uh, has a uh, extremely varied, fascinating background uh, as an engineer, a researcher, an expert in everything from bioengineering to data science and economics. Um, historically, her career has been both academic as a researcher, but also she's worked a great deal with uh, various global organizations, particularly around this intersection that exists between data and expert users and communicators. Um, her particular focus is actually on health data and the, comp and the complex data that comes out of systems that analyze health data. And through that, she's worked with um, you know, people in Australia, in Germany, in the US and the UK, including organizations like the World Bank. Uh, today she works for Prowler. Prowler is a Cambridge-based uh, AI company that uh, focuses on a, is building a platform that allows for complex decision-making in complex environments. So things like smart cities, uh, things like large interconnected financial systems, weather systems, logistics, etc. cetera. Um, and she's working um, on, on that interaction uh, machine um, uh, divide uh, in that organization too. So over to Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarenga, for that uh, introduction, and thank you very much for being here and braving the weather today, standing away from the feedback microphone. So, in a lot of sense, uh, I'm going to be talking today, or I guess the thing, the thing that drove me here today was this question about the future of decision-making. So, at Prowler.io, our kind of raison d'etre is about AI should be there as an enabler of decision-making. AI is fantastic, but at the end of the day, if you can't, if it doesn't help you, if it doesn't enable you to make a better decision, then it's just a prediction system. And that's good and it has its place, but can it be more? And we think yes. So uh, I guess just to give kind of some of introduction about what we're doing and who we are. Uh, we're a team, as, as Saranga said, we're based in Cambridge. Uh, we, we actively do research, we actively build probabilistic models, reinforcement learning, multi-agent systems, and I'll talk about why we do that. We're also a group of engineers, so we're trying to build something that works within the world. We want, we want it to be out there. So one of the things that, uh, you know, that is really key, and if you're around at 12.30, I would encourage you to go in and hear our CEO, Vishal Chandra, speak about it, is this idea of principled AI. What do I mean by that, and why, do we, why is it so important to us? So by principled ba AI, what we mean is kind of five core things. The first is that it has to be a probabilistic model. Why is that? So it has to, be, it has to use probability theory at the, at, the, at the core of it. Why is that so important? The reason that if you have a black box actually trying to understand why a decision is being made, is impossible to do. You have to be able to have some accountability or some visibility about why decision was made. We also believe that AI systems has to have to be flexible, as we heard about, pre you know, from Mark and Eric. This is an un uncertain world is that we live in. Today it's very raining and there's a lot, lot of noise. We have to be able to be flexible, or an AI system has to be flexible in the way that it counters and, and responds. It also has to be data efficient. Uh, we. I mean, 10 years ago, it was the age of big data, and I think it's really a leftover uh, remnant now to think, okay, we're in a, a, data is everywhere, it's ubiquitous, there's so much that we can do. Actually, what we find is that this is actually not always the case. We want to be able to learn on a very sparse data set, but in a way that still has that visibility. But at the same time, it's really key that data informs and drives any decision that we make. Why? Because we have to have that transparency again, you know. And I guess the last point too is that it has to be aware of it acting in a world, a world that is noisy, dynamic, uh, surprising, fantastic, but also can throw up a lot of question marks. So we act within five key areas. At so at the moment it's within three core areas, but we're looking to expand. So currently within finance, logistics, uh, and well, now within education too, and we're looking to expand. And our kind of philosophy is that actually if you can solve, like a lot of the problems in each of these areas use the same plumbing in a way as problems in another area. So if I'm talking about energy networks and smart cities, I'm still looking at a, at a network of things. 
that actually can describe the way that the n and logistics networks work in a very similar ways too. So if we can solve it in one place, perhaps there's a very good chance that we can solve it in, in another place too. So as head of data science at Prowler.io, I guess I'm really intrigued about this future of decision making for the very simple reason that it's wonderful to make a decision. It's wonderful to be able to go, yes, I put it into my AI system, I now have it there. Uh, but what you find, and y you're exactly, is that you can go out to a company, you can say, you've given us a data, we've been able to be efficient and data-driven, and we can tell you that the answer, the thing that you should do when making a decision is this. And what you'll find is that, well, you get to one of two responses, is you'll get either, fantastic, that's great, by the way, why is this the case? I need to be able to go and inform people that I'm accountable to why this is the case. Or you get, no, that doesn't, that's just not gonna work. And either of those options are not good options. The reason for that is kind of for the very simple basis that you put in, if you think about principle the AI or AI in general, you're forgetting about one really core component, which is trust. So we're looking to build systems that are not only relevant and reasoned, but also you can trust. And one of the things that I was hoping to talk about in, the, in our panel session is about, I guess, the hurdles that we go through in doing that. So my own previous history, as Saranga alluded to, is that I'm an engineer by training. I worked in computational neuroscience. That's where I did my PhD. So I'm used to really large, complex networks. I'm fine with the idea of probability. I'm fine with the idea of systems acting and giving in, in weird answers because I know that I have the skills to go in there and understand what that is. I can't expect the same thing for the CEO of a techno like of Samsung uh, energy network users. So you have to be able to translate all of those concepts into something that's human readable and human logical. And I think Mark raised a really interesting point that it, there needs to be that kind of context driven. But from our perspective, we're taking one step further or one step deeper perhaps, and actually looking at the AI that informs and drives those systems too. So Saranga mentioned uh, my time working alongside uh, the World Bank. That was in a previous application before I, I joined Prowler. And one of the things that was really interesting there, that was working with national country, sorry, with working with national budgets to try and allocate the best use of health funding. One simple uh, need that we needed to do, but actually there were a lot of layers in, in doing that. There it still was just as true that you had to go through and show the visibility about why a decision was made. That's not always so transparent from the front. So, just coming back to the idea that this world is uncertain, and I think one of the things that's, you know, I can talk about health healthcare funding, and that's one instance where we had six months at a time to sit down to get the relev relevant data from a national health ministry, to go through, to work with them, to make sure that they had a user, user acceptance all the way through, and then go through, give them a, uh, a recommendation for what decision they should make. They could talk to us, they could say, hey, why is this? Why is this the case that you've recommended this, but actually we, we never thought about that solution before? We had the time to go through and actually talk about that, why that was the case. There was the opportunity and that bandwidth to have that dialogue that went back and forth. However, that's one instance of, of AI, but that's not really where the future of decision making is going to be. The decision making of the future is going to be spontaneous, it's going to be uh, instantaneous, it needs to be able to scale, it needs to be able to be transmittable too. So if we take the instance of, of you know, cars, which is uh, if we think about automated uh, or autonomous cars, really key area. And what I was, I was kind of going through my bookmarks and I found a, there was an MIT tech review from March 18th, 2018. And the, the, that piece of work was about what happens when a car, you know, first kills somebody in a, in a road accident, which is a very possible thing to do. Who was responsible? The timing of it was <laughs> terrible in a way because the first fatality for a pedestrian was on March the 19th, 2018, the very day after. And if you were not familiar with the story, it was a, a pedestrian, a woman who was walking along with a bike. 
so the AI system in the car didn't recognize her as a pedestrian, didn't recognize her as a, as a cyclist because it wasn't moving fast enough, and there was this kind of gap in between. So as a probabilistic system, I want to be able to go in there and say, well, actually, I think you should go. However, there's a 5% chance that that movement that's coming on the left-hand side, that could actually be a ped pedestrian. If I'm thinking about reinforcement systems, I'm either thinking about rewards or I'm thinking about risk. And I should be thinking, well, actually, that risk, if it's a pedestrian, is too, too high, I should just stop. And that's, I think, really that kind of that realization that it requires not only kind of front-end human interaction, but also underlying probabilistic context that is really going to be uh, one of the ways that we need to move forward as a community in the future. So we're not quite there yet within Prowler.io, at least the areas that we're concentrating on are kind of at least within, say, for example, within logistics. We're looking at you know, questions such as how much inventory do I need to maintain? Where should I be moving things? All questions that are um, you know, tractable, scalable, uh, sorry, that need to be instantaneous. But I think it also highlights the fact that you need to be able to scale. Right, you can talk about, you can make a decision, for, a human can make a decision for one factory or one warehouse, but actually you want a system that's gonna be able to make a decision for thousands of warehouses. It's a really trivial example, you may think, but actually this is a lot of the, the, the work that underpins this world that we don't want to see and that we should be able to you know, outsource into a principled uh, decision-based AI system. So I'm gonna leave it there. I just, I guess the take home message that I would like to, to share with you today is that it's important for a system to be reasoned. It's important for a system to be able to be relevant and timely, but it's vital for an AI system to also be trustable too. That's all I wanted to say for the moment. Thank you very much.